This is Last Call, and we're going to talk about what everyone's talking about, the end of the Steelers-Patriots game. Now let's take the rule out and look at this logically. You learned what a catch is playing football at recess, just like I did. And I don't know about you, but nine-year-old me and my nine-year-old friends didn't have many arguments over what was or wasn't one. Every now and then, you try to get away with trapping the ball and hiding it under your forearms, but for the most part, it was one of those things. You knew it when you saw it. And on Sunday at about 7 Eastern, we all knew what we saw, which was a game-winning touchdown to break the Patriots' hex at least until the playoffs over Pittsburgh. Only in the process of administering the rules like they're the tax code, the NFL found a way to screw all of that up. So what you saw on Sunday, you didn't really see. Jesse James's dramatic catch and lunge for the game winner wasn't really a catch at all because he lunged for the goal line, which, again, would be the logical thing for a player to do in that spot. Now here's the thing that's nuts. The NFL is reactionary to a fault. A little bad PR commonly creates a big overcorrection, and yet, with this one, the league has steadfastly stood by a rule that badly needs changing. Calvin Johnson caught the ball in 2010, just like Des Bryant caught the ball in the 2014 playoffs, and we all know those things to be true, just like we all know what we saw on Sunday afternoon, which was a Steelers win that didn't turn out to be a win because James's touchdown wasn't a touchdown. Somehow James had enough control of the ball to land on his knees with it, pivot, and dive for the goal line, but not enough control for it to be a rule to catch. And because the goal here is to make the officials' lives easier by throwing logic overboard to make a rule black and white, Tony Corrente's crew wasn't left with much of a choice. Remember, to overturn a review, you're working on a criminal standard, not a civil standard, and it's fair to say that the ball didn't survive the ground was beyond a reasonable doubt. So what's the answer? It's to give the officials some responsibility because subjective doesn't need to be a dirty word. Back in the 80s, the rule was that a player had to control the ball as his feet hit the ground. And the only problem I can see with that is that it puts the burden on the officials to judge control, which, if we're being honest, shouldn't be that tough. In fact, I bet we could find a nine-year-old to do it.